Hey guys, imagine trying to make sense of a data set with hundreds or even thousands of features just like you see on the screen. It's overwhelming like seeing a huge tangled ball of yarn. That's where principal component analysis or PCA comes to the rescue. PCA that is principal component analysis is like a pair of magical scissors that can cut through the complexity and reveal the hidden patterns in your data. In this video, let's understand what is exactly principal component analysis, which is nothing but one of the dimensionality reduction technique in machine learning. Why principal component analysis and how to reduce dimensions? How this PCA really works? And of course, let's see the implementation of principal component analysis using Jupyter Notebook and the Scikit-Learn library. So stay tuned and make sure to watch this video till the end and let's get started. Hey guys, Welcome to AI with AI, this side Asif Imnad. Just a quick recap on where we are. We are in this machine learning algorithms hierarchy where we are talking about unsupervised learning. We have already seen supervised learning, classification techniques, regression techniques and all the different algorithms under each type. Currently, we are under unsupervised and we're going to talk about one of the technique, which is nothing but dimensionality reduction using PCA. We've already seen clustering. We're going to see some more algorithms under unsupervised learning in the future videos. So make sure if you haven't watched our previous videos, go through those videos first. I'll keep the playlist of all machine learning algorithms, which we discussed in the past. You can find it in the description and also in the I button above. Have you ever wondered how we can simplify complex data without missing its actual essence, its actual characteristics. So this is where PCA comes into picture. Imagine you have a bunch of data points scattered in multiple dimensions, each representing different features. It's like having too many ingredients in a recipe, making it difficult to identify the basic flavors. Again, this is where PCA steps in. So what exactly PCA is? So PCA is a dimensionality reduction technique that simplifies complex data set into a smaller set while maintaining significant patterns and the trains. This is important to understand. Reducing the dimensions but still maintaining its significant patterns and the trains, its characteristics, its essence, its true nature of the data and how it really does. It does this by transforming the original variables into a new set of variables which are called principal components. This is what we are going to see. What do you mean by principal components? The performance of all of these machine learning models is determined by the data we feed into the machines. Thus, it is critical that we offer our ML models with an ideal data set. Now, one may expect that more the data you feed to the model, the better it gets. But unfortunately, that's not the case. More data doesn't mean optimal efficient ML model. As you can see in the graph, as number of dimensions increases on the x-axis, the model's performance starts decreasing. So if we input our model an extremely big data set with a large number of features and the columns, we run the risk of overfitting. This is called the curse of dimensionality. So don't ever think that more the number of features, more the data means better the performance of our model. That is not the correct case always. You may run into the risk of overfitting. So choosing that right number of features with the quality data, quality features is really important. That is why pre-processing, data cleaning and feature engineering, PCA, all of these concepts come into picture when we feed our data to machine learning models. So reducing the number of variables of data set naturally comes at the expense of accuracy. That's for sure. So if you start reducing more number of variables, then the accuracy will also start affecting. So we need to find that optimal number of features that we need to provide. But the trick in the dimensionality reduction is to trade a little accuracy for the simplicity. You know, because smaller the data set, it is easier to explore and visualize the data and thus make analyzing data points much easier and faster for machine learning algorithms without irrelevant variables to process. We discussed this many times. The quality of the data is the most important aspect when it comes to the getting the optimal performance of our model. And for data scientists, it is very difficult if we have vast number of features. Imagine if you have hundreds of features, hundreds of columns, it is very difficult for you to understand which features you should consider and which features relevant to the final accuracy of our model. So one of the biggest advantage that we get is after reducing the dimensions, it is easier for us to understand the data set and also it becomes easier for us to visualize the data. If we 
reduce the dimensions to 2D, 1D or 3D. So to sum up, the idea of PCA is simple. Reduce the number of variables of the data set while preserving as much information as possible. That's what PCA stands for. Okay, before we proceed and discuss in detail, if you are new here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so that you won't miss our latest videos on AI. We see you are watching our videos, but 90% are not yet subscribed. We put a lot of efforts creating these videos for you free. Keep us motivated by liking and subscribing. So YouTube algorithm will also help us reach more audience. So did you subscribe and like? Thank you. Now let me talk about how this PCA really works and how does this really reduces the dimensions. As you can see on the screen in PCA, currently we have two dimensional data. So in PCA, we have two PCA components. So one which you see along the data is PC1, which is principal component one. And the second orthogonal line to the PC1 is PC2, is the principal component two. And in PCA, the first principal component, which is this line here, captures the most variations in the data. And here, the second component captures the maximum variance that is orthogonal to the first component, right? So PC2 is orthogonal to the first component and captures the variance. As I said, why do we use PCA? This can be used for a variety of purposes, including data visualization, feature selection, and obviously data compression. In data visualization, PC can be used to plot high dimensional data into two or three dimensions, making it easier to interpret the data. In feature selection, PC can be used to identify the most important variables in a data set. In data compression, PC can be used to reduce the size of a data set without losing important information. So these are all benefits that you get because of the technique called dimensionality reduction. Let me show you example how it really works. So currently we are imagining only two dimensional data. Definitely PCA is used for higher dimensional data where we have tens or hundreds of dimensions. But to understand, to make it easier, we have only two dimensional data here. This is how the data is plotted and how does this data compression or PCA works in this situation. So very first thing that PCA does, it draws a best fitting line over the data, something like this. So this is again something like a linear regression where it draws a line over the data to best fit over the data. Then what it does, then it converts this two dimensional data into one dimensions because we want to reduce the dimensions. Definitely we have 2D, so we need to convert this 2D to 1D. Then how does this really happens? Now, each data set which you see around this line are a drop on this principal component line here, something like this, as you see. So each data will be dropped on the line here like this. And again, we plot this data on 2D. So this is how it should look like. And if I remove that PC1 line, this is how the 2D data will finally look like. But do you see some variation in data before compression and after compression, right? So this is how the data used to look like before dimensionality reduction, before data compression. After performing PCA, this is how the data looks like. So there is definitely some loss of information when you reduce the dimensions. Let's understand what is PC1 and PC2 in more details. For this, we have drawn again the data on X and Y axis, two dimensional data here. And this is what the original data looks like in X axis and the Y axis. These are the actual values given. For given values, we have plotted this data, right? How do we convert this in PCA? So in PCA, we measure the distances along the PC component line, which is drawn. This is PC one line, which is the best fit line over the data. And the second line, which you see here, the dotted line, which is perpendicular to the first line, which is PC one. This is how the PC two line is drawn at the right angle to the PC one. And after drawing these lines, we create a new set of data set. We mean PC creates a new set of data sets, new columns, PC one and PC two. So PC one, these are nothing but the distances. So distances along this PC one are available here. So this data set from origin from zero is available at certain distance, right? And same goes for PC two. For PC two, we are measuring the variance here because it is at right angle measuring the variance from PC1 line, right? So that's why you see PC2 values are relatively very small compared to PC1. And that is why we can ignore this PC2 and remove this PC2 and we can convert the data from two dimensions to one dimensions by considering only PC1 feature. This is how principal component analysis really works. How does data compression works in three dimensional data? So this is your three dimensional data, as you can see X1, X2 and X3. In this case, if you want to reduce the dimensions, then we drop a plane and something like this. So this is a plane, horizontal, 
in three dimensions and we drop all the data sets the data sets which are above this plane we drop these data sets on the plane and the data sets which are below this plane are again pushed up on the plane here and finally two dimensional data will be created something like this isn't it amazing i hope the concept of reducing dimension is clear to you right but there are certain questions that i have is pc1 line and linear regression lines are same what do you think answer this in the comment below so i'll leave this question for you if these lines are not same then what's the difference so if you remember the line which we draw along the data is best fitting line over the data and this is what we also do in linear regression right so does that mean this line which is drawn is exactly same as that of linear regression so i'll leave this question here answer this in the comment below keeping time in mind in the immediate next video we'll see how to implement pc algorithm and i'll also show you what is the effect of dimensionality reduction in machine learning and how models accuracy gets changed so we discussed about what is exactly pca why do we use principal component analysis why should we reduce the dimensions and how this really works and that's how we come to an end of this video if you have any questions regarding the same let us know in the comment below if you found this video helpful please subscribe to my channel and hit the like button and don't forget to share this video with your friends and the colleagues thanks for watching see you again next time till then take care and bye bye